Hey everybody, Chuck Barone. Friday, November the 17th, 2023. Wrapping up another crazy ass week. Uh, we're coming to the end of this, this month here already. Can you believe how quick this month has gone by? I don't know, man. Maybe just you start to get a little bit older and the time goes by so fast, man. I can't believe it's like less than a week. A one week from today will be Black Friday, man. It'll be like mania at the shopping malls, right? A uh, week from yesterday, Thanksgiving already, man. It just seems like it's happening so fast. Anyway, guys, I babble. Forgive me. Uh, <laughs> before I get rolling, let me take a half a second. Welcome, everybody, to the show. And as always, thank you guys for your support. Um, you guys are keeping this show going, man. We really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to keep bringing you guys the news you need as long as you want us to. All right, so let's talk about markets today. Um, no data today coming. Very quiet day on the market. Mixed results all over the place. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, stock market today was up, but it was basically a flat day. You have the Dow Jones advancing one point, sitting at 34,949. The NASDAQ up 11 points at 14,125. The S&P up 5 points, 4,514. So the S&P back above 4,500. NASDAQ above 14,000. You got the Dow zeroing in on 35,000. Market numbers looking healthy. And uh, I think you have... Well, by looking healthy, I, sh I should say again, because these are not like milestones that haven't been haven't been clipped and passed in the, pa in the past. But uh, these are not new highs or anything like that, but it's kind of getting back to these levels, and uh, which harkens good news for these markets, I think. Markets becoming convinced that this inflation fight is over, convinced that the Fed is done hiking rates. Now they're already factoring in how many rate cuts will we get next year, which is amazing to me. We haven't even, we're not even near 2% yet, and everybody already talking about how, uh, you know, how many cuts can we get. All right, we'll see. Bond market today, kind of a weird day in the bond market. The 10-year basically unchanged, changing just fractionally, sitting at 4.44%. The two-year goes up five basis points. So falling prices on the two-year yields a little bit higher today. Up five basis points, 4.90%. And uh, I think that you know, the, this bond market, these yields want to come down. The bond market wants the Fed to be bringing these yields down. And the yield, the Fed wants these bond markets to bring, you know, yields. The, the Fed, I think it was, what, two weeks ago the Fed was saying the bond market was going to do their work for them because yields in the bond market were so high. I think, you know, we have these falling yields here, but are, is this sustainable in the face of the U.S. Treasury? And they're just outrageous flooding and endless flooding of the markets with treasury bonds. I don't know, man. I, you know, we got some mixed signals in the markets. We got certainly some dynamics that are opposed to each other. So it's going to be fascinating to watch how it all plays out. The dollar continuing to come down today, down 103.87 on the index, so now well, now under 104, was up about 106 again at the peak, coming back right back down. We'll see where it goes. Um, I think that if the Fed truly is done with their rate hikes, if this cycle is over, I think you're going to see the dollar come down to 100, maybe lower. We'll see. It's going to be fascinating, but if the dollar does come down, you're going to see gold and silver take off, although not today. I think maybe just the end of the week, everybody kind of sitting on profits, protecting them. So even in the face of this falling dollar, gold and silver down today, not by much. Gold down by $1.10, sitting at $1,979.70. Silver goes down one cent today, just a penny. $23.71 for an ounce of silver. So holding up strong, but surprisingly, I thought the rally today with this dollar coming down will be a little bit more significant. We'll see what happens early next week. Oil today rallies back. You know, it had been cratering pretty good.
Rally is up today, $2.86, sitting at $75.76 for a barrel of West Texas Intermediate. I'm telling you guys, it wants to be in that trough. It wants to trade between 70 and 75. I think that that seems to be where it seems the market is most comfortable with those prices. I think it's a little bit above that number now at 70 cents or 75 cents or so, but it's probably going to stay, come down and stay in that trough. Oil market and the people in the business obviously doing everything they can do to get that price back up. Um, but I just don't see it doing it. Just it, it goes up a little bit. It can't hold it. It goes down a little bit. It seems to be where it wants to trade, and we're going to keep an eye on it. I, ultimately, that is where it will trade. Bitcoin today rallies back up $502, 36,453 for Bitcoin. Good strong number. Waiting for the next leg. Let's see if it's going to rally or if it's going to out of steam it now and start to come back down. It was quite a quite a rally from you know around 16,000 to almost 37,000. For you Bitcoin holders out there, you got to be feeling pretty good right now. Um, Lots of news on cryptos with these ETFs coming. Big names in the industry sponsoring these ETFs. They come along. You're going to see a big spike in these prices, guys. All right, so let's wrap this week up. I want to talk about something that's you're hearing more and more about these days. And that is the idea of going from this inflation we've been suffering through for about the last two years or so to deflation. Is deflation really a threat? Well, I spoke a couple of weeks ago about this. Um, I was talking about the Fed pulling money out of circulation and how this is only the fifth time in history that we've had real, a meaningful pullback in money, in re, you know, reduction in money in circulation in M2. The last time, we had a meaningful reduction. It was 1931 to 1933. Well, we know what that, what that was and led to. Um, there were three other times in the 1800s, 1873 to 1893, I think. Um, all of those, including the 1931-1933, led to panics in the stock market and big deflation numbers. Now... We have Walmart today coming out showing prices on some several items in stores are falling fast. Apparel, clothing prices, household goods. Um, among the leaders of this with prices falling as high as 6%. Walmart shares, stock coming down 8% as consumers are cutting back on spending, especially on non-necessities. And they're spending more on food and fuel and other things because they have to. These are necessary to function. The stuff that isn't new clothes, stuff for your house, things, you know, do what I call the electives, <laughs> you know, the, the uh, non essential spending all coming down. Consumers pulling in their horns now, running out of money, which not a surprise, but also now running out of credit, right? Um, spending on non-essentials has been coming down, it's been falling, but now it's noticeable and the markets are starting to really worry about it now. Now, let's talk a little bit about what deflation actually is and how it works. Now, it's not as good as it sounds, first of all, all right? I mean, it starts with falling prices and certainly after this inflation, Seeing the prices in the supermarkets and other places, a little bit of price reduction sounds pretty good right now. Now, um, well, here's the problem. It leads to a spiral where prices can't recover. So prices continuing to go down, and along with those prices, corporate profits, right? Now, what happens is consumers don't want to buy that new car today because they feel like they might get a better deal on it tomorrow. They don't want to buy that new refrigerator. They don't want to buy that house. Price is coming down. Actually starting to come down in real estate as well. You're seeing more and more people with houses listed 
reducing prices, some, in some cases dramatically, $25,000 or more to attract buyers because rates are so high, right? So now you're starting this deflationary spiral. So it goes, prices come down, profits come down, people get laid off, there's less money to spend, people spend less, prices come down to attract buyers, and the spiral just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And now you have a situation where it takes a big intervention. So what's the plan then? Flood the economy with money, right? Flood the economy with cash, create a giant inflation. Now you get this teeter-totter back and forth between prices going up, prices going down. We lose control of your economy that way. Uh, it's just terrible, guys. It's not what we want. Uh, falling stock prices crash everything out. People's retirements, you know, the corporate world freaks out. Everybody feels like everything's worse. Um, you know, no one's making any money everywhere. Everybody has fear of job losses. The government now, especially with the debt levels they're at, would absolutely be sunk and powerless to help. Uh, it just would be a really, really terrible thing. And what happens finally, ultimately, with this spiral is economic collapse, which we saw here in the 30s, we saw around the world in the 30s with that just deflation, and then ultimately political upheaval, wars, and all kinds of terrible crap. So as much as it might sound fun to have some prices coming down, and we probably will get some of that, we do not want to hear the words deflation because that will certainly lead. It's just that is the first stone in a stoning of the entire economy. Anyway, guys, it's Friday. Let's get out of here. Go have a great weekend. My beloved Bills are playing the Jets this week, man. After losing to the Broncos, who the hell knows what's going to happen. But I'll be there cheering them on. You guys do likewise. Have a great weekend. Spend time with your friends, your family, people you care about. Let's get away from this crazy world for a couple of days and spend some time doing stuff that's fun and, you know, interesting. We'll be back to this stuff again on Monday. Who knows where we're going next week. So have a great weekend, one and all. We'll see you again on Monday. Until then, guys, take care. Thanks.